Today I'm here to talk about this. This is the key focus. So what's the key focus? It very much is a KD computer. Why is that? Well, key focus stands for Kubuntu focus and it's actually made in partnership with Kubuntu and Kubuntu is part of KD. So that's why I'm saying this is very much a KD machine. It uses the Kubuntu logo and everything. Now, the fact that they use Kubuntu very much matters because this actually ships only with Kubuntu and this is a big change compared to other competitors that offer a variety of distribution with Linux on it. So a variety of Linux distributions. So why do they do that? Well, when you're a hardware maker doing things for Linux, you have the responsibility to make sure that your software actually works on your machine. So you do that by actually testing the distribution and making sure that uh, even if you have, I don't know, multi monitors with different resol resolutions attached, it still works nicely. Now, if you offer like five different distributions, then you necessarily are going to have less time to actually dedicate to each of them. Whereas shipping Kubuntu only actually gives focus enough time in theory to make sure everything works nicely and this actually shows in various ways. Firstly, in their testing, they actually found a couple of bugs in Kubuntu regarding multi-monitors and they actually went ahead, reported the bugs and actually found a fix, a fix for two of them, one of which has been upstreamed, meaning that now all Kubuntu installations and not just this one will actually benefit from that. So by focusing on something that exists and not doing their own desktop like System76, an example, might want to do, they can actually make sure that the software is better for everyone and not just them. Not only that, but they're also very open to actually offering bounties to actually fix the bugs that raise up when you use these kind of machines that are correlated to KDE. So if you're a KDE developer like me who doesn't actually who isn't actually employed by KDE or any other company, the fact that there are bounties that they offer to fix some KDE bugs that you can encounter using their machines is something very nice to do and that actually helps the KD community grow. So it is a very interesting idea, even though it's just a machine that maybe not everybody will buy, just the fact that we have it and that some people can focus on it, make sure that the whole community, the whole KD community can grow from it. Now, this is clearly intended for professionals and they do offer a lot. As an example, well, they ship really fast. Like I talked to them one day, the day after it was already shipped and I got the, I got the machine next Monday and it was Friday. <laughs> And as soon as it arrived, they actually sent me an automatic uh, email offering a 30 minute walkthrough of all the features that they actually offer to all customers, which is very important. <laughs> and in general, they pride themselves a lot in their customer support. So I'm surely going to test that out. I'm, I'm going to make some stupid questions to, to check if they can answer that. I don't know. <laughs> they also want to make sure that everything works out of the box and they even have guides on stuff like Blender that points to some material because they don't want to reinvent the wheel but they make sure that uh, for all use cases that you want to use this machine with they actually have guides that they link to to actually use like if you want to use Blender they link to the famous Donut Blender video just to make an example. Finally, they also have customized Kubuntu a bit, which is super nice because, you know, Kitty is really meant to be customized and they did some interesting modifications. One that is particularly important, they actually ship with a lot of key focus apps that help you use this machine. And now I'm going to go through them. Let's also give a look to the build quality. I mean, what parts or what hardware are we actually getting? So now we'll go through hardware and software. So, I mean, let's get started. Okay, let's start off with the ports. On the front, we have a USB-C that works as a Thunderbolt 3. We have a USB-A version 3.2. We've got two in-one audio, phones and mic, and we've got the power button. On the side, we have a SDXC memory card, and on the back, the power input, a mini display port 1.4, a RJ45 GBE, two USB-A 3.2 still, and another USB-C that is still Thunderbolt 3. And to finish it off, we have an HDMI 2.0B. Inside, instead, we have a Intel Core i5 version 1135G7. It has 2.4 GHz base and gets to 4.2 with turbo. It has four cores, so eight threads. It has an integrated Intel Iris Xe Graphics J7, 
G7, I don't know. The RAM is dual channel DDR4. It is up to 64 gigabytes. I have here one terabyte of storage and the chassis is an Intel Nook Panther Canyon. I went through the specs rather quickly because you know you can check those on the website. What you cannot check on the website is how the software is actually implemented. So let's switch to that part. Okay, third party of this video, the software that comes out of the box. We get immediately a welcome to the Kubuntu Focus Dialog, which does a lot of stuff. It installs some extra software, super useful. It has like OBS, Inkscape, Blender, all this stuff that you would actually need. There's also a dialog to actually set up um, password manager, uh, which I've actually used, uh, Kipas, I've created a database to actually check that it is working correctly. You can connect via email to Thunderbird, also pretty useful, you get that just out of the box, so uh, I will skip that for now. Then you get a couple of things that don't um, quite work immediately, that is, uh, we get as an example Dropbox Cloud Drive, we don't immediately see, immediately see the dialog because it has to be installed. And this actually takes a few sel uh, seconds to um, for the installed dialog to actually pop up. I think this is a bug. It is slightly confusing because it says, I've opened up Dropbox, but it hasn't. But yeah, after a few seconds, you actually get the dialog where you actually insert the password and it installs Dropbox and uh, works out of the box, which is pretty nice. We also get in sync to Cloud Drives, which has kind of the same issues. You only see it after a couple of seconds, but it's reasonable. I think it's not that big of an issue because you just after the first time, you just have to wait for 10 seconds and you understand what's going on. It also has uh, JetBrains um, as an IDE out of the box. Again, and it asks you if you want to set it up. And again, it opens after just a few seconds. So yeah, uh, you see now that uh, we have InSync and Dropbox uh, installing, and then we've got JetBrains on the right, so everything is being set up. Lastly, we can actually change the avatar, which is a nice finishing touch of this installer. I am going to actually change uh, to flowers, because, I mean, flowers, why not? Thank you, Dropbox. Now, actually, th this drink is just fine. And that was actually everything. Now uh, it says, um, asks to actually see all the curated apps, which we will go through. But first I actually want to talk about some of like the major change to the actual KD Plasma desktop. These that you're seeing now are all the apps that are actually curated by Kubuntu Focus. There are a lot, as you can see, we'll go through them. This is the quick help widget, which actually tells you as an example, the shortcut to show the desktop, Meta D has now is doing. There's also Alt tab to switch between windows. We probably know about this, but with the arrows, we can actually get a lot of shortcuts. And I think this is incredibly useful. You can actually see everything and you can open the image in Gwen view to actually see it full resolution. Then there is um, console shortcuts. And to use the console, there's also command line um, instruction, like a list of all the command line um, comments that you might want to use. And then there's Vim, and this is the only <laughs> operating system that I know of that actually tells you how to exit Vim out of the box. This is a widget, which means you can move it around just like any widget or remove it if you don't like it. I think it is a very nice touch. Uh, it actually helps use the desktop out of the box. Let's get into the created apps. So we've got all of this. Uh, the first one is Anaconda GPU. We don't actually have a dedicated GPU on this machine. So this one doesn't do um, anything. But uh, starting off with the second one, it's the C compiler version switcher, which is extremely useful. As an example, to compile KD Plasma, uh, I often have to change my G, um, G, C++ uh, compiler version because it doesn't support some package. So this actually, Having a tool that does that out of the box is pretty useful. Now, this is uh, just an example, so I'm going to cancel the installation. As a small bug, when you cancel, it says it has failed. It, it hasn't failed. I, I canceled it, that's different, but it's such a small bug, I don't think that it really matters. 
Then there's the extra software installer, which is what um, was also in the first setup and that I've already run. So there's nothing extra to install anymore. There's the fan control on other, uh, on the laptops. You can actually control the fans in this dialog. In here, since it's the Intel Nook, based on the Intel Nook, it actually tells you that there are fan controls in the BIOS and it actually tells you how to open up the BIOS. Here we've got a system repair. So we have the, um, the check for the hardware signature, as you can see now, uh, it skips reconfiguring the hardware in this case because it's done, of course, when they send me this. And we also get this kernel cleaner um, packages to keep this one that you're seeing right now, sorry. Then there's this focus tool, which is pretty interesting. It's basically a set of guides on how to um, set up the, um, everything really. As an example, I'm going to pick the desktop theme. And in this case, it tells me how uh, to change the themes, what selection of themes I have, and how to actually reset to the default panel. All of these are pretty useful, especially how to reset the panel, which in KD Plasma out of the box is not super simple. There's a variety of, variety of them. Backups are pretty important. Uh, here you have backup back in time out of the box, which is super useful. I'm going to go through that later on. There's uh, the kernel cleaner, which we've actually seen uh, in the system repair tool. The keyboard color chooser, in this case, I don't have a keyboard, so it's not relevant. Here I can actually select a CPU power profile. It's a bit like when you open up the power applet in KD Plasma, but this, uh, you actually have more information. It tells you the gigahertz and stuff, so more useful. There's this video sync utility that, again, is for uh, the laptop models with the NVIDIA GPU. Uh, what it's meant to do, it it prevents uh, video tearing across all the um, attached display, sorry, and it actually has its own page that explains everything. There's actually pages to explain everything for all curated apps and also you've seen how many guides there are and there's also guides on how to use uh, Blender, Inkscape that actually refer to some other, I have talked about this, other guides like the Donut one which is super useful. So there's a lot of documentation and then there's this presentation that is actually to welcome you and tell you how the machine, wor machine works out of the box. So it walks you through what you should do when you actually get uh, the machine. Like as an example, run the first uh, run dialogue that we've seen at the start of this segment. Yes, you see it now, all the stuff, it, it goes through. It also comes, uh, I can confirm it with a um, USB key and the uh, uh, microfiber cloth. So that's actually really nice to include. The design, we've seen it in the previous segment, so we know it's good. You can also purchase a YubiKey separately, but I haven't um, one. There's also here the information on how to contact the support and how to encrypt the system. Both of, the, both of these information are actually pretty important. Then there's also a walkthrough to all of the focus tools, but again, I've, showed, I've shown them to you. So they also do some adjusting for um, suspend and resume if you're using a NVIDIA GPU, which again is not the case, but I'm sure that if you want to buy a computer with NVIDIA from KFocus, then that's going to that's gonna be on your mind. I mean, usually NVIDIA and KD don't go so well together. In this case, the amount of support is significantly um, higher compared to um, other NVIDIA computers that are not, do not come um, with Linux out of the box. So I haven't got one with NVIDIA to test, but I do see that in the documentation there is some important care in that regard. Then there is actually back in time for the backups, as I've said, and that's actually pretty impo important, I think. I am actually known to be the kind of person that always forgets to put, like always accidentally puts a space between the name of the folder I want to delete and the slash when I'm doing RM. That has happened to me multiple times. So actually backing up, even if it's on the same hard disk, that's of course not as good as a backup if it was in an external disk, but still in the same disk, you can make sure that you don't have any data loss. Uh, loss. In this case, we've got out of the box that will to make uh, backups every hour. Um, and of course, like it keeps all of the backups of all the past hours for the first day, and then one every day for the past week, one every week for the past month, this kind of thing. I can 
as I did here, also do a snapshot manually. So I think this is particularly important to actually have out of the box. So there's also a section of these slides called details for reviewers, which I guess is targeted at me. And it tells you how to test TPU and GPU performance. It's the kind of advice you can easily guess. So, I mean, turn on the CPU uh, at high level and also use Geekbank, this kind of thing. So it is not a section called how to cheat in, and don't worry. What I'm going to do now is actually use the machine for my all of my day-to-day -day activities, which are very much uh, power intensive. Uh, as an example, I'm doing OBS recording and need to do that. There's also editing in KDE Live, KDE uh, development, which involves a lot of compiling. I'm going to test the speed of compiling too. Then I'm going to register the podcast with Audacity. I'm also going to be drawing. I actually bought a nice drawing tablet just for that. So I'm actually going to test this computer, this little guy or girl, in all day-to-day -day activities that I normally do and compare it to the other computers that are good at performance to see how it performs. So uh, this video was a quicker introduction compared to like a full review, which is because tomorrow I will be on a flight to KDE Academy, which is the conference at KDE where um, it lasts a week and there's a lot of discussing on how to drive the community forward. So obviously I won't be able to fly to with Barcelona with my monitor and everything. So I'll have to leave this one here. But when I come back, I will actually be able to do a full review. I just really wanted to start talking about this device before getting to Academy. By the way, about Academy, if you're interested, I will try to make, uh, if I manage to daily videos about what's happening, if there's anything interesting about KD that is being discussed so that you're up to date. I will also try to have that in the podcast. I don't know if I'll have the time because obviously my focus there will be KD, but I will try. And as soon as I get back, there's the full review of this thingy. And there's also a full review of another computer, which is a laptop coming up. So stay tuned and see you either Monday or Sunday with another video.